Today we're gonna to be going over what's in my spear bag. Hey guys, so this is what's in my bag. Um, there's a couple things here that were not directly in this bag, but we'll, I'll cover them in a bit. So starting off is the bag. Um, I use a Bouchot uh, Mundial bag, this guy right here. I actually just got this recently. Uh, before this, I was using a uh, storage container and I will explain why, but right now I use this Bouchot bag. Really nice, um, it fits your fins really nicely into here and you could fit all your stuff into this first compartment. And there's one other large compartment here that's actually insulated, which is really nice. So you can uh, use this, double this up as a fish pocket. So you can put some ice in here, put your catch in here or whatever else. Um, so two huge pockets, some um, straps here, and then you can strap two spear guns on the side if needed. But uh, really awesome bag. The um, cost of this I think is around 140 ish uh, but I got it from my local spear shop um, super awesome investment so far so uh, going to the right we have some plastic fins uh, these are some pretty basic spear pro uh, beginner fins that I got from my local spear shop it's been used for about two seasons now uh, they're pretty banged up if you can see that there but they've served me really well. They fit really well. Um, I'm probably gonna upgrade these to the fiberglass ones really soon. Um, great thing about these is you could actually keep the pocket and just switch, switch out the blades. Um, and these were about 120 from my memory, but um, really awesome. They fit well and I've had no problems. And especially cause I go shore diving um, only right now, I still have yet to go on a boat. Um, these are really good because I don't have to worry about scratching them up too much or I don't feel too bad if I do. Uh, so plastic fins. Next up uh, is a mutiny lobster bag or you can use these to grab some uni or whatever um, is in season. So this goes around your waist and um, it has a really nice elastic um, string. You just pull on that, stuff your lobster or uni in there and uh, have it around your waist. Love it. Of course, you don't need it if you're not gonna go lobster diving, but just have that available. Next up is my, are my weights and my weight belt. I use a Spear Pro rubber belt, I think it's called, but um, yeah, so weight belt. Um, I got weights, uh, got it all at my local spear shop, and then I have a Meandro stringer, pretty basic stringer, goes around the waist. Um, nothing special about that, but um, I think that's, that's that. Next up is um, a trauma kit right there. Um, the trauma kit I have never used yet. Hopefully never, I will never need to, but um, this is a trauma kit that I got. I keep it in my bag just in case, but um, yeah, never had to use it. Hopefully never will. Next up we have the mask and snorkel. Um, so one thing I'd highly, highly recommend uh, for those of you that are on a tighter budget is if you're trying to figure out what to spend the extra money on or pretty much where not to cut corners is definitely this is these two are, are one of them. So um, definitely the mask. You want it to fit your face correctly just because it's a more expensive mask doesn't necessarily mean it's better for you. Uh, so I would highly recommend going to your local spear fishing shop, try your mask on and make sure it fits your face really nicely. This is a Epsilon. I don't know the model number, but this has been really great. Um, I've used it for about three seasons. Um, and it's been awesome. This is just a simple Picasso um, snorkel. Just clear all the way through. And you'll notice some tape at the end. I added that tape to my, my snorkel and as well as some of my um, uh, spear buddies just so we can identify our, uh, ourselves really easily in the water. So snorkel and mask, don't skip out on. Next up, we got some Kevlar gloves. Um, I use some Spear Pro Kevlar gloves. They're really great for obviously when lobster season is in, lobster diving. Uh, but generally, I like the extra protection. Um, that's pretty much it. So I believe these are three mil, um, but yeah. So Kevlar gloves, Spear Pro. Awesome, next up we have some fin socks. 
Uh, pretty basic, these are three mil fin socks that I got, again, from my local spear fishing shop. And um, pretty basic, but these have been used for a little over a season or a year. And you can see, I definitely should replace them soon. Just keep in mind, I'm a little heavier. I'm like a little over 200 pounds, so. Um, but one secret I do have that I'm not sure most people use is I learned this from a fellow spear diver, or Spiro, um, is actually getting these really cheap um, fake Crocs from the store Daiso. Or if you know any place where you can get really cheap Crocs like this or water shoes, highly, highly, highly recommend these. These saved um, a lot of fin socks. So what I do is I suit up, wear my fin socks, get ready to go dive, and usually uh, shore diving, you have to walk or hike a short distance. I'll put these guys on with the fin socks. They'll protect me when, uh, or they'll protect the fin socks when I'm going down rocky terrain and I don't have to worry about these. These are $5. So um, yeah, these get wrecked. I just buy new ones um, and I just keep trucking along. So yeah, and I leave these on shore and I don't freak out if someone potentially wants to steal them since so they're $5. So really highly recommend getting one of these or a pair of these. Next up, I have a Princeton Tech uh, flashlight. Of course, you don't have to get a flashlight if you're gonna dive during the day, but um, it's great for hole hunting and then obviously for lobster diving, you definitely want one. And you'll notice I have the um, little attachment here for measuring a lobster. Of course, again, if you're not gonna lobster dive, you don't have to have this, but one thing I have. And then the next is my Rife knife. It's my dive knife. Um, this is one thing, this is one item I would say if you really wanted to, you can go a little cheaper on. Um, I personally um, spent, I think it was around $60 for this guy, so it's a little pricey, but a couple reasons why I spent the money. Um, it's extremely ergonomic. It has a really nice, um, um, you need to apply a decent amount of pressure to pull it out. And the huge thing was this kind of elastic band that's at the end. Um, I usually put this around my wrist when I'm dispatching fish or um, when I'm doing anything and I just want it handy, I just let it hang, do my thing, and then grab it again. So that's the reason why I really like it. I like it because there's two points of security. You snap it in and then you grab this elastic strap, pinch it all the way to the end, and you know it's not going anywhere. So, rife knife. And then, of course, my spear gun. Uh, spear gun, Hawaiian sling, um, but for my setup, I use a Pathos Sniper 85 roller. It's been super awesome, very versatile gun. Um, the roller gives it a lot of power for its size. And uh, I have a Meandros reel with some braid in there. Um, and then I have a GoPro mount that I use here. It looks a little funky. It uses a motorcycle helmet arm and a bicycle mount for the rear. So if you wanna learn more about how I did this and why I don't like it and why I love it, uh, check out the video in the description. I go over how I built it and some there's some footage of um, how it looks. So there's that, spear gun. Next up, of course, have some sort of body wash, shampoo. I usually go to the 99 cent store and just pick up some um, Suave. Um, I just use this. Uh, milk and honey, so just pick out a smell you like, I guess, or scent you like. Then next, I have this little cheap scale that I keep around for fun. Um, unfortunately, most of the fish I catch, I don't really need to scale very much. Sad, but um, yeah, so cheap scale, and the scale has a little ruler in it. Um, I usually use this to measure. I probably need to get another one because this one's kind of gross, but yeah, measuring fish. Um, and on the note of measuring fish, I do have marks on my spear gun here to, uh, for fish. So I have like 12, 12, 14, 22, 24, 28. And then I'll just double check with the scale and um, measuring tape out, out of the water once I'm out. So cool, we have that. And then next up, I have this really nice or kind of really cheap um, cooler bag that I use. See that there? It's uh, insulated, it's watertight. Um, I think I got this one relatively cheap, around $20 or so. Uh, I fill this up with some ice before I head out and hopefully it's full of fish by the end. So really simple, 
backpack cooler bag. And then next I have my wetsuit. So wetsuit I keep in this Ikea bag. Um, I just had it laying around and I, it's really easy to use and I like using it. So I just have kept, use, kept using the Ikea bag. Uh, but I have a five mil Salvimar wetsuit that I use on my dives. Um, it's been really awesome so far. If I was to go on a boat, I probably would reduce everything, weight belt, uh, wetsuit, and put it all into that Bouchot bag. Uh, you don't wanna be that guy that brings a ton of stuff into the boat. So I just use this Ikea bag because um, it's convenient and it's in the car, So and I have the room. So yeah, there's that. And then kind of the last thing on the list for diving at least is my my dive float and my dive line. Uh, I have 50 foot float line here um, attached to my SEAC Seamate float. It comes with two bladders on the side and a bladder in the middle. And there's like this little Velcro compartment in the center right here. And it has this dive flag right above in the front. So love this. I love this float. Um, it's worked out really well. One thing I will say though, is when I go out into areas where I know they're is a lot of kelp or super dense um, forest of kelp. I will typically not take this because it gets tangled and it's more headache than it's worth. So um, one thing to note, but really love this float. It's been super awesome so far. And in regards to diving, I think that is it. Um, but a couple things that are not diving related directly um, are some of my media stuff. Um, I have my DJI Spark, my drone that I use to capture all that footage. Um, this is just a remote that I have, some DJI remote. And this is the Spark, comes in this nice little foam bag. But there it is, really simple. Um, it's not the latest and greatest, but it's been working great. Um, I would highly recommend if you get the Spark, it does not come with this remote typically, unless you buy a bundle. So I would highly recommend this. It's pretty much almost unusable for any sort of range if you're just gonna use your phone. So that's one thing I learned. So I um, have this, I have all of my SD cards and everything in a separate box with my GoPro. And I typically will bring um, a box like this. This box usually comes with those GoPro mounting sets. But um, this guy right here, it holds all of my GoPro camera related stuff. Um, so I have this little compartment here to hold all my SD cards for my drone and my GoPro. It's watertight just in case something was to happen, um, but it carries all of my cards. It has little slots for these, but um, yeah, so card holder. Um, the waterproof housing for my GoPro. Um, this is a cheaper version. I think it's around $20, but I'll have the link in the description. Um, for my GoPro 7, um, probably gonna upgrade soon, but this is for a 7. I have a head mount, um, just in, just sometimes I wanna swap out and do a head mount versus the gun mount, I'll have that. Um, some extra arms, just in case the arm on my gun snaps. And then of course, the GoPro 7. This is the GoPro 7 Black. Don't think that needs much explanation there. I bring some extra fasteners for the GoPro mounts. So like these little fasteners, um, make sure I have some extra of those just in case. And then um, I found this to be probably one of the best investments if you have a GoPro or multiple is buying one of these uh, extra battery compartments that can charge multiple batteries at one time and it can obviously hold the batteries for you when you're ready to use them. So I have this. Um, one's in the GoPro right now, but one, um, they carry three, and you can charge all three at the same time. It saves a ton of time. And then lastly, in my little media kit here is just a basic, um, like, tool, tool um, like, screwdriver kit. And then I use these to, um, if I need to do any work, very simple work, um, taking off GoPro mounts or anything like that. Especially, um, as you would imagine, all these fasteners get a little rusty, so I swap them out, um, and sometimes doing it by hand is not enough, so I'll have that, use that tool. So again, media kit, totally optional, but that's what I carry. And the drone, again, optional. 
this is what I carry. So you might be wondering, do I have to buy the bag? Is, are there certain things that, um, that I have that you can find substitutes for? That's a great question. I always ask that to myself when um, I was first starting out. So let me show you what I first used when I first started diving um, is this kind of storage container. You can get this literally anywhere, any Target, Walmart, anywhere. So it's a basic storage container. I would put all of my stuff in here. Um, it's great because it's watertight and it doesn't spill all over your car if you're worried about that, if you have a sedan or something. Um, and uh, everything's contained. Obviously your fence won't fit in here, but you can put almost everything else in here. Um, if you really wanted to, you could stick your fish in here too if you don't wanna buy a bag or a cooler. Um, but yeah, this is a great option. You can stick everything in here. It'll fit if you're just gonna shore dive. So um, this is definitely a good option. Um, sometimes I'll bring this, but um, now, I, now that I have the bag and uh, the cooler bag and all that, this is what I bring. So I hope that was helpful. I know that was a lot of information, but um, hope this gives you some ideas on what to get, what to, um, yeah. So again, I shore dive. This is probably more geared to that, but um, this is what I use with the float and my wetsuit and my cooler bag, but I'll have all these products or something similar in the description below. And uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate the subscribers and the support and all the questions you guys leave in the comment section. Um, I'm growing just as, just as much as you guys are. So thank you again for the support. I just hit over 300 subscribers. It's absolutely amazing. And I seriously thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, of course I'm available uh, in the comments or you can shoot me an email. I'll have my email in the description, but thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.